recording? It's recording. It's recording. Oh, I'm nervous now. He's nervous. Everyone, you're going to be famous. There's a camera there. There's a camera there. Oh, Jesus. If you're camera one, camera two, camera three. Yeah, no. It's like, um, that and Hyde Park. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey guys, welcome to the seventh episode of the Coaches Corner. We're looking a little bit full today. We have a special guest here, Michael Messina. Oh, three camera he, angle. He, <laughs> <laughs> the resident physio. And um, we've got him in for uh, to answer some questions. Our first special guest. Yeah. First we have, special guest. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me here. <laughs> Live on the set, mate. Yeah, no, it's good to be here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to dive straight into the questions sent from you guys to our Instagram page, Squat Club AU. Let's get into the first one. Hey guys, I've found that my stomach is the hardest place to lose body fat. I know that training and nutrition is important, but are there any specific exercises I should be doing to help fasten the process? Thank you, MVPs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bryony. <laughs> Another shout-out. <laughs> too many shout-outs. No more shout-outs. <laughs> she loves her shout-outs. Ali, she support us. She loves her shout-outs. Please do it. She's the biggest fan. <laughs> Thanks, so, Bryony. Are there any uh, Are there any exercises that you can do to uh, lose body fat in any areas? If I worked one out, I'd be making a lot of money. <laughs> for sure. I wouldn't say there's one exercise. Like, if there was one exercise you could be doing to lose body fat around your stomach, Everyone will be doing it and you'll know about it by now, that's for sure. So that's probably not the focus, it's probably not what exercise you're doing. It's probably, like you said, nutrition. That's probably the biggest thing. Um, stress management. Yeah, especially around that stomach area. So um, I would probably look to nutrition first and stress management yeah. before you start looking at what exercises you're doing. <laughs> and probably just remember you can't um, spot reduce, so you can't be like, oh, I want to lose uh, body fat in my stomach. I want to do this to lose that. It's, it doesn't work like that. Your body loses body fat where it wants to lose body fat and not in one area. Don't mess up wrong. True that. Correct. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. So develop a routine in everything you do. So not just focus on the gym. It's a whole lifestyle balance yeah. thing. So routine in how you eat, how you do everything outside of the gym and inside the gym. So mm. that will put the door a holistic approach to it. Consistency is key. Okay, next question. <clears throat> I've been told I have a butt wink when I squat. So why is this such a problem? Uh, Common issue. Michael. Uh, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think um, it, basically why butt wink is so in, so critical in having like in, in a squat or in a deadlift or any kind of you know, functional movement like that. It's not in alignment with you know a neutral pelvic position. Okay, and that's really important. Um, our pelvis is the center of our body. Okay, so if that's not in the right position, the muscles that attach above and below that can't do their job. So especially, we, everyone talked about their core, like you have to brace a core, you know, making sure that's all nice and solid. Um, if your hips, so your butt, your bum sticking out, or it's tucking under at the bottom of a squat, your core can't activate as efficiently as it can if it's in a neutral position. So that's why it's super important. So if you're lifting heavy weight, you know, especially if you're you know, squatting heavy or anything like that, it's going to put a lot of stress on your erectors in your, in your lower back. It's going to put a lot of weight, uh, extra stress on your facet joints. And that's where injuries happen. And I think that's probably the most common injury I see in the clinic mm -hmm. um, from people who come in who say, oh, you don't have a I think for people who don't know what it is, because yeah. like people don't really know what butt wing is, posterior tilt. Posterior tilt. And yeah. what it looks like when you squat, it kind of hits the top under, under when under you under squat. Under. So yeah. if, if, you have, if you're squatting by yourself and don't have a trainer, probably maybe just record yourself and see if you have a yeah. butt wink yeah. to begin with. Um, that's, that's what it is. It's quite common too. You see it a lot in the gym, 100%. That and the opposite was just the Beyonce beauty where your butt pops out as well. So you've yeah. got an anterior tilt, mm -hmm. just as bad. You know, it's mm -hmm. like you're, you're, everything jacks into extension and you just lock everything up. And that's where that classic bottom of the squat, they go to push up and they go and they feel something. And yeah, that's 100% the most common injury I see from people who do you have any, um, do you have any special, like, I guess, uh, tips or <coughs> cues that they can um, implement into their training that can help reduce the butt wing? I think it all starts with your preparation. I think um, it all starts with your warm up and under probably understanding is the biggest thing. Because mm. a lot of people jump straight into either from they'll come from, you know, uh, just doing the gym either with their football team or they'll do group classes and they want to try it on their own and they don't really have anyone there to watch them. Mm. They don't really understand. I think. Getting understanding of how your hips move is, is critical. It's mm -hmm. probably the most the, the first thing I'd ever go to. Mm -hmm. That and looking at some basic core stability, so looking at dead bugs. Dead bugs are 
my go-to mm. core stability exercise. But I think it's about having a, tra- a chat with someone who either knows what they're doing or knows about enough to educate, or having a chat to your trainer or someone else, you know, someone mm. that has that education to kind of on on, yeah, on teach that as well. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And it's also lifestyle factors as well that contribute to that. So the way you sit at work, Sleep. driving. You know, we're not designed to sit. We're designed to move. So mm. I think that's the most important thing. Mm. Um, that's yeah, my go-to advice. Mm. Okay, you, you, it's not just how you're training for the hour in the gym. It's what you're doing for the 23 hours outside mm. of the gym as well. Like Steve was saying before, it's, like, it's a whole lifestyle thing. So I yeah. think as well, if, if this person is looking to squat, I, feel, I find some people, um, if they're restricted through ankle mobility, mm-hmm. it affects the hip range of motion. Yep. So maybe just look addressing um, ankle mobility first. Um, some people just. Yeah, how their hip sits in the socket, yeah. it's not going to play in their favour either. Um, even just the balance of your foot, your distribution of foot, if you yeah. lean too far back on your heels, you'll get that butt wink as well. So yeah. I think that, and then sometimes maybe even just tightness, maybe abductors, yep. pulling play a part. Everything. Your lower um, leg, your lower limb is a chain. Yeah, it's change. all together. It's all so. together. Whatever happens at the bottom affects the top and the top, vice versa. Yeah. So, and you even look at, you can go, you could go. Yeah, a wall here. You could go thoracic. You could have a look at thoracic mobility, yeah. shoulder external rotation ability. So if they're, they're not able to get their shoulders back, they're going to extend more, which is going to push them forward. There's, you could do a whole body assessment on why you yeah. know your hips aren't sitting right or why you've got a butt wink. But I think um, it comes back to getting that initial education as to how to do it. So get that initial movement, mm-hmm. understanding how your hips move like anything, and then trying to implement that slowly. So if you haven't squatted or deadlifted before, I think it's really important to start with the basics and then build your way up. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I get patients coming into the clinic all the time and they say, I want to deadlift, I want to deadlift. And they can't, they're just not ready. Mm. So we start really basic. We start with our, you know, our RDLs, you know, even with a kettlebell or just with a bar, just getting them to move to get them to, to hip hinge. That's a, I can go into a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, we well, here for a while. First yeah. session, he's taking over the show. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, there's, so there's, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it, yes. And I think, I think the biggest thing is don't get disheartened. Yeah. Don't think, oh, I can't, I've got a butt wing, I can't squat. Not the case. And you can modify it as well. Like maybe you're just going too low. Maybe just yeah. go just to parallel or something. Yeah. Or maybe Easy just box. maybe just a box. Maybe just chuck some plates on your ankle yeah. if you are lucky in ankle dorsiflexion. Mm-hmm. Chuck some on your heels and just modify it. Like work with what you got as well. Mm-hmm. And then try to address those issues. Don't just put heels in a box and then do that for the rest of your life. Maybe try to fix it. Yeah. your range of motion. Fix yeah. and address the key factors that Mike spoke about. And that's something if you, you talk to your trainer about, about yeah. you make those modifications. And, and if that doesn't work, then that's when you... That's right. Come in a bounce back and think <laughs> plug. <laughs> I think it also like it's to do with uh, I guess education, understanding the movement as well. Mm, I know that part. it's happened with a lot of my clients, and then once I've tried to educate them and understand how the movement works, it reduces the butt wink dramatically. Yeah. yeah. So I think that is uh, also another part of it. Yeah. One hundred percent. I'm glad we have him here today. Yeah. <laughs> Good to be here, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, next question. Thoughts on when to drop calories when in a calorie deficit? How long should I stay on the same macros for? I think we, we had, had this. We had this question. Yeah, yeah, like first week. Mm. Yeah. Um, so Go back to first episode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've already like, answered it. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much as we, said, as we said before, um, you don't need to change your macros all very time. often or all the time. Um, it depends if you, whatever your goal is, if you are still moving forward to that goal, you don't need to change anything. If it stops, if it stops, then you obviously modify. change, modify. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have to be hitting them first as well. If you're just all over the yeah. place, you have to Look at the bigger picture. Changing, yeah. Look at your yeah. consistency and making sure that you are being uh, compliant with your macros and your calories. Um, and if you're staying compliant for you know, about two to three weeks and results are starting to slow down, measurements are starting to slow down, then look at trying to reduce um, your macros or then you could even implement you know, uh, energy output and go into uh, adding extra cardio into your workouts. But yeah, it doesn't need to be done every single week. Um, yeah, just over time when I guess everyone you know, slows down. Yep. Alrighty. I think we answered in more detail than the other one, so yeah. you know. <laughs> but Michael took up most of that time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to retain these people watching this video. Yeah, Charlie, this <laughs> High score club coaches. Um, if you're finding it hard to finish your training program on a particular day because of tiredness or lack of motivation, is it better to finish the workout with lots of rest in between sets or just call it a day and go home? Call it a day and go home? We'll continue on. Uh, I'm gonna say 
just me every week. I'm going to say... So what do you do? It's all about weekly loading. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Fuck! <laughs> you do listen to me! I always listen to you. Yeah, I, always listen listen to me. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's the biggest thing. If, if you have like a set plan of how many sets and reps per week you're doing over a program, and like sometimes I just get caught for time, or you maybe just not, you don't laugh, just tired towards the end, just do it on another day, I think, anyway. It's still gonna weekly load in, like Michael said, it's gonna come around anyway. You wanna keep the intensity up higher, too. Yeah. So if you, you know, those days where you're not feeling it and you're gonna have low intensity, it's probably not gonna be as beneficial to you if you kind of throw that on to a different day. Or look at the days when you're busier and choose your big sessions to do on days when you're not so busy and not gonna be as tired, so you can get yeah. the most out of that session. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Or we'll look at your nutrition as well beforehand, yep. so you can have, I guess, the energy and the motivation if you're, you know, you're feeling yourself before a bigger training session. Yeah, that's probably an answer for you, Ebony, for your question because I know that you don't eat enough. <laughs> yeah, you feel before. Is that zooming in again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think just remember, like this, that feeling of oh, I don't want to finish. It's normal. As long as you're just not doing it every single session, just an excuse because you're being lazy. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be days where you're just not feeling it. Like you just like you just can't get into. You just can't find that intensity, and that's normal. Yeah, we're human. It's, yeah. it's okay. But if it's a regular pattern of having every session every week, then maybe it's something you can look at differently. Like approach it from a different angle. Yeah, or it could be as well like enjoyment <clears throat> of the actual you know program that you're doing. So you know, in the day it's, it's consistency and compliance. So you, and adherence. So you need to make sure that you are doing something that you're enjoying because that way then you will be consistent to it. So. Yeah. Or know why you're doing it. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, hey coaches, why do my rotator cuffs always get hurt when I bench press? It's hard to answer it's because vague. it's very vague. Um, I think if you're getting sore rotator cuffs when you're bench pressing, you're probably not Locking scaps back, retracting, yeah, yeah. Probably relying too much on external rotation to take the load. Mm -hmm. I'd probably have a look at doing some scapular stability work instead. Mm. Um, I think that's probably it's it's a vague question. Very exactly great. why? Yeah, is it you Just know? Is it end of the set, yeah. start of the set, weight wise? You know, it's hard to tell. But I think definitely have a look at some scapular stability. It's so critical to yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, I think you know your scapulas, the hips of your upper body, you know, they, they control everything, you know. And it's not a, a joint like your shoulder or your wrist or your elbow where it's locked in, it's it floats there pretty much. Mm. And, and it's by it, muscle. It relies so much on muscular contraction yeah. to stay stable and then it's like again like a chain, if that's not set properly, if that foundation's not set, everything above it's quite shaky. So if we're not looking through there when you're on your back and taking load, mm. um, then everything's gonna be transferred upwards and yeah, external rotation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> 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 but I also think, I, I mean, I don't know, uh, I guess, how this person is bench pressing, but like you yeah. said, like the, the scapular retraction is really, really important. So when you were bench pressing, instead of pushing out through your shoulders, yeah. kind of retract the shoulder weight. With a bench, you start always retracted and then you come down, you keep retracted and drive through the elbow. Yeah. If you're going like this, out, we're going to come that's the yeah. As yeah. soon as that scapula rolls forward, if you're under load, it's going to take kind of into internal rotation. Mm. Okay, and so you're going to be like jacking up all through there. So it's really important to look back. Um, yeah, I'll yeah. probably also add to that, like it's very vague as well. Yeah. But even just maybe including a warm up for your rotating cuff before you bench ready, just, just to get prepared for that, and that might help as well. But like yeah. it's pretty vague. So warm up, maybe technique, and definitely scapability. scapability. Three things. Probably a lat activation as well. Yeah. yeah. So some, some bar work and get your And it's following on to what we were saying about the butt wing. Yeah. Having an awareness and an understanding of like, exactly. why you're doing it. Yeah. Instead of just looking at it on bench pressing, you kind of look at like what you're actually doing when, you, yeah. when you're bench pressing. So yeah. mm. you'll know how to warm up, you know how to activate, and you'll know how to do it yeah. with the efficient technique, you know, the safe manner. And sometimes there's no problem with regressing. If, yeah. you're, if you're struggling, yeah. if you've gone up a bit, yeah. always do it within your struggling. Means. Yeah. Just take it back a couple of steps and really focus on your stability, your activation work, and I think that's that's fine for a mm. couple of weeks. It's probably a more appropriate way than just trying to push through it. Yeah. And that's when it leads to injury. We don't want that. Yeah. yeah. I don't want that. Yes. <laughs> Another plug. We want you into it. No way. No, no, no. Way. no. <laughs> I'm too busy. Now. <laughs> cool. All right, that's all the questions. Anyone else have anything to say? Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Thanks for Special guest, Michael. Put his details down, down below. Yeah. Yeah. You want to bounce back, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring the, the sponsorship. <laughs>
call. If you guys have any questions for the next episode, then shoot your message to our Instagram page, Squat Club AU, and we will see you next and week. Don't forget to give Michael a follow. Instagram up here. It'll <laughs> <laughs> be a handle. There. Be a handle. Ladies. Ladies. <laughs> see you guys. See you next week. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.